Mary Acosta um, has worked in the restorative justice field for many, many years. She worked with um, Howard Zare, who was our keynote speaker two years ago in Elkhart, Indiana. She grew up in Goshen, Indiana, which is where you two uh, lived for quite a while. Um, Indiana seems to have been, especially Elkhart, the hub of restorative justice as it moved down from Canada into the U.S. Uh, Mary is now the program manager of the restorative justice mediation program, and I want to point out Michael Fear over here. Can you just raise your hand? Michael influenced me greatly, and I know he influenced Ben and others as a facilitator for the restorative justice mediation program. I didn't even realize you were back in San Diego, so I'm really glad to see you here. A lot of you are involved either in the RCC or in RJUMP. How many of you are involved in some way with restorative community conferencing or with RJUMP? Good, good. As facilitators, prim primarily, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mary Acosta. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, I don't know, like, I don't know if I can talk with just one hand. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I think I can do it. I'm just making fun. Um, yes, thank you all. Uh, I'm so happy that we got such a big crowd, and I was so excited about everybody so far. I mean, what do you think of the talk so far? Good? Yes, yes. Well, like, um, like Jim said, I'm with the Restorative Justice Mediation Program, and um, I'm going to introduce Jill Covert. Jill. And I'm going to introduce Chrissy. Christy, sorry, Figueroa. Um, uh, they're with our program, and, and we got a lot of other facilitators out here. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm, I know time-wise, we don't have a whole heck of a lot of time, but I was just going to today introduce to you um, uh, what the Restorative Justice Mediation Program, our jump, uh, is and does, and um, just uh, let you know about that. We did have a gentleman who was going to talk, and he was involved in the Tariq Kamisa case, um, as he was, he owned the pizzeria. Um, Sal, if you all are familiar, he mentioned that case. Um, he, sorry, Felipe's Pizza. Yeah, um, but uh, he had to leave, so I'm not going to be able to share his story uh, with our program uh, with you all. Okay, when I get there. Okay, so first of all, so um, restorative justice mediation, our mission as an organization, um, we did actually start 25 years ago here in San Diego, and we've been since then promoting the principles and practices of restorative justice since then, being a voice where in times and years where there was no one really interested in this, um, and we're so glad that now there's a lot more interest in a lot of areas. Um, actually, the Claussens over here um, uh, trained some people, um, not just Jim 10 years ago, but 25 years ago. Uh, Pearl Hartz, who was a retired school teacher and wanted to find alternatives to um, the criminal justice processes, um, uh, she was trained by the Claussens um, and brought this down here to San Diego. So that was called the VORP program. We, um, we call it Victim Offender Dialogue now. But um, we've been doing that with people for a long time for youth. So our, uh, oops. so our mission, though, is to help reduce repeat crime, improve the lives of those affected by crime by providing programs, education, and services based in restorative justice principles and practices. So you guys already heard about restorative justice. Uh, Paco had mentioned that. Community-based process designed to involve, to the extent possible, those who have a stake in a specific harm and collectively identify and address those harms, needs, and obligations in order to begin the healing and put things as right as possible. So those, that's like the main definition of restorative justice that we like to, to, to use. Um, our three main, I'm whipping through this, our three main programmatic areas um, in which we apply those principles are uh, victim offender dialogue, so like the community conferencing program, which is amazing and I think it's really going to be growing here because of the community aspect. Um, victim offender dialogue, I always like to say, is kind of a more intimate process. It's the victim of the crime with the offender and support people. 
It, um, it involves just that conversation about what happened and how can we address what happened and make things right. Um, we work primarily with juveniles who have already been um, through the process, the justice process. If the victim wants to meet, we'll, we'll have a dialogue with them. Um, although we are getting some more pre charge or deferred entry of judgment where they will drop it if they participate in our program. Um, we also are doing that more with adults. Um, and that's really promising because people assume as soon as you turn 18, you know, there's not that much for you or you should know better or something. Um, and so we really find, and in anyone who works um, in the field knows that really until someone's maybe 24 or 25, they're still not necessarily able to fully comprehend the impact of what they've done. And so we are doing uh, victim offender dialogues, um, DUI with injuries, some resisting arrest cases, and some other interesting cases. With the juveniles, they're primarily property offenses like theft, burglary, um, vandalism, things like that. Um, and then also we do have a group of facilitators of ours who have been trained in um, doing victim offender dialogues where the may have involved a homicide or a murder or a DUI where there's been a death and the surviving family would like to meet with the person who's in prison. Um, it's a little bit different process, but it's also a really, uh, and it's very victim initiated and centered and sensitive, and so that um, uh, we also do those sort of dialogues. Our second programmatic area is victim or inmate education, and this is really exciting, especially with all the interest now in re-entry, and there's a lot more inf uh, interest in prisons um, using restorative justice principles and, and uh, to help people prepare for getting out. You know, I mean, eventually 75 to 80% of people who are in prison will eventually get out. And it's really important. There's even a grant out now where they're specifically saying they want to promote programs that have restorative justice uh, principles in them. So I mean, I think it's really exciting. The victim offender education groups, um, those are, a f that's a 52 week program um, started by Insight Prison Project. Has anyone heard of Insight Prison Project? All right. There you go. Um, they're up in San Quentin, and they've been doing for 15 or so years um, for long-term inmates, you know, people, lifers, um, who still, you know, uh, need to learn and grow and get insight basically into what led to their uh, criminal life and led to their criminal uh reason for being in prison. Um, and so those are based on um, the insight into victimization, trauma, and a lot of uh, good programming in the course of 52 weeks. We have um, a program that our facilitator, or our coordinator of our inmate education, Andrea Travers, uh, developed a program that's a 20 week, 20 to 26 week program that um, is similar to the Vogue, but it uh, the emphasis is more on helping people to understand um, uh, the influences and the impact of, um, of substance abuse and some of the other issues in their lives and get, gain insight to help them to um, understand and understand the, the impact also on society of what they've done. Um, new thing that Jim had mentioned too, um, we're excited, uh, juvenile um, halls. Um, it looks like we are gonna have a circle process that is being accepted um, in juvenile hall. And um, uh, we're hoping that that will also be something that can just plant some seeds about you know, the impact of one's actions on a larger group of people, and that will help youth to start to get it. Um, and then restorative practices in schools. Um, we are supporting um, that. We know that connection between youth and school and that importance of, you know, of, of a school and a good, healthy school experience with future criminal activity also. Um, so Discipline That Restores, actually, we are doing uh, training uh, in San Diego here in the restorative justice uh, process, Discipline That Restores, that was mentioned and developed by the Clausens, actually. And, 
We are training um, schools and s teachers and um, people from the school district. We've already had two trainings this year. Um, and so if anyone is interested in that, Jill says that there is a interest sign-up sheet in the back there. Um, uh, but getting back to the inmate education, Christy, if you want, I'll just say Christy back there. Um, Christy is a facilitator in women's prison, in Las Colinas Women's Prison, um, of a group there. And um, she would be available if you're interested in a little bit more information about that. Um, and Joe and Heather, yes, Joe and Heather, you guys want to stand up? Joe and Heather are both, um, Heather is a, um, is a school counselor and Joe's second grade teacher, and they've both been trained by the Claussens and by Fresno Pacific University in the restorative uh, or discipline that restores process. And they're the ones who are kind of uh, spearing, spearing is our, spearing. our um, restorative justice training here, um, our restorative discipline that restores training here in San Diego. So, um, yeah. Yes, volunteer opportunities. So, um, uh, so, we don't have a community process like the Restorative Community Conferencing, but we do use volunteer facilitators throughout San Diego County. We take cases all through the county from north to the border. And so um, we are always looking for facilitators, bilingual um, now as well as, um, as just English speaking, um, from all over um, uh, the county. And we'll train you and then um, give you the opportunity to, to facilitate a case, observe a case, and, um, and get trained and give back in that way. Um, people find that very exciting. Um, yes, okay. Um, we sort of, so these are some trainings that we also have. The, um, I will mention in the restorative, um, both of these are going to be happening next week actually here. Um, so if you are interested in more information, you could go to our website um, and here. And there is some materials back there. And I would just add um, also for anyone who has been a victim of a crime, um, which I won't make you show your hands, but um, we are looking for, um, for people to come in uh, with us to some of these groups in the facilities um, and the prison and now juvenile hall even to share your story with them to help them to understand a little bit more of the impact of what they've done on others. And so if anyone has been, and you might be open to that, please see me. Um, I would be happy to share you know, that possibility with you. So thank you so much. Thank you.